Hello, in this quick tutorial we're going to be looking at how to generate a position pass and render it correctly in Mental Ray. So some, uh, uh, with, the with the position pass you can do a variety of things. Uh, one, uh, if you have Nuke you can use actually uh, a point visualizer to visualize the points in space so that you can actually use it kind of like as a guide for 3D placement in your 3D compositing if you want to know for instance like where a 2D sign or, or a 3D sign within Nuke would want to go you can use the positions pass to kind of generate a point cloud within uh, Nuke and we'll be looking at that and the next thing uh, that you can do is you can do some relighting stuff with it so in this one we're going to look at how to generate a position pass within Maya and Mental Ray for compositing in various applications. Okay, so the first thing that you're always going to have to do is I'm going to just pull up these render globals. Let me get them so that you can see them over here. And we're, we've already got it set to Mental Ray, which is good. That's what we want. We're going to want to have it set to some form of a 32-bit format. I use OpenEXR. Um, uh, which is what I like to use. There we go, open EXR. And um, then you have to come into the quality tab and make sure that it's going to be set to uh, a 32 bit frame buffer. So under the frame buffer, we just want to make sure that we set it to uh, RGBA float. Uh, it doesn't need an alpha, but it's just common practice to just throw the alpha in there. And uh, so with that said, we've got our uh, object set. Uh, to open EXR and I always just set that to C name and then whatever else annotations that I want within that um, and uh, we're just going to use the camera still we don't even need all that stuff on we can keep it on though and uh, let's just make sure that we have any kind of headlight creation is off with enable default light because we don't want any light coming within the scene at all we want it all to be completely just the shader for the position pass. Okay, so let's just get started. This is a very easy one, but um, you're going to need to dive into uh, some of the nodes within the hypershade. So under the Maya nodes, under utilities, what we want to do is we want to pick up the first thing, which is going to be this sampler info. And I'll be going over more sampler info uh, tutorials in, uh, shortly. And then what we're going to want to do is just simply grab within Maya a uh, surface shader very simple and we're going to uh, click drag over so we bring up the connection editor and in the connection editor you can see that we have the sample or info on the left and the shader on the right and we're just going to want to go to out color and under point world we're just going to simply start connecting our connections and you can see that it automatically becomes red and so now we've got the point position world x into r y green z blue and you can see that our shader has updated with these color patterns that are generated from the point position world. So let's just take a look at what that looks like. So I'm going to just kind of come in here to the perspective view really quick. I'm going to turn off everything except for uh, polygons. So we only have polygons in the scene. I'm going to select everything and I'm going to go assign material to selection. Let's come back to our camera still and let's pull up the render view and let's snap off a render. Oh, let me make sure, just because I'm not sure what my rendering are, make sure there's no final gather, no global illumination. For this one, we can just set our quality uh, to a two for right now. Box, let's just put that at Gaussian, and uh, that should be fine for this, for this render. So let's just snap off a render. I'm just gonna go to render, camera still, and here we go. So there you go. Now it looks a little funky in the Maya viewport and that's really just simply because the Maya viewport is not going to be able to take that transcoded 32-bit image data and display it correctly. But the image is there, the information is there, this is a correct looking position pass and you can use that information in a program like Nuke. So we're just going to bring in a read node and we're just going to look at the values for right now. Let me just make sure that this is, let's, let's, let's do this like this. Let's make sure that the project is set. And I'm going to just set my project, always a good thing to do, by the way. I'm going to set it to there. And I'm going to come back here. I'm going to snap off another render to make sure that it goes into the 
the correct images directory in the temp folder so that now if I bring back up nuke and hit the type in read or hit, just hit R for the read node I'm going to come into my project directory here mental ray tutorials images it's going to be under temp and there we go and hit open display that in the viewport and you can see that we have all of these numbers a lot of them are over one and that's because it's a 32-bit image with unnormalized values we have some looks like we have some negative values as well those are going to be going in the negative Z and there you go we have a position pass right out of Maya coming into Nuke. Now that we've seen the position pass and seen what it looks like in Nuke, let's see what it looks like when we do a few things to it. So what I've done here is I've just rendered an image of that scene that we used to generate our position pass. And now let's take a look at both of them together in Nuke. So I'm just going to pull up Nuke here to an, a new scene and I'm going to pull up my two uh, stills here. So we have the position pass and the lighting and shading pass. I'm going to drop those into Nuke. There we go. We have our position pass and we have our rendered pass. Uh, we can see that the render pass is coming in a little bit bright. It's, called, it's, it's, it's defaulting to a linear color space, but you don't want to just change it here to make it look correct. Just in case you don't know that, what you're going to want to do is actually just hit the tab key and type in color And we want a uh, color, the node we want is color space. Color space. So if we hit return, it generates a color space node. I'm just going to drag in this one we want to keep linear. I'm going to drag in that color space node. And what you're going to do is you're going to say in sRGB out linear. And you'll see that it does the exact same correction as if you were to set it in there before. But it's keeping the information at 32 bit, where if you're changing it within the read node, you're going to be crunching it down to 8 bit. So that's not what we want. OK, so the next thing that you're going to want to do, and you're going to want to make sure, is that here under the plugins node, all plugins, you want to make sure that you hit update and that's going to release some plugins that were not necessarily available to you uh, right when you first started uh, within uh, Nuke. So with that let's just hit the tab key and let's type in position and the one that we're going to want is position to points and it's got two inputs one for the XYZ coordinates one for the color coordinates so let's just pipe the color into the color space node the XYZ through the position node and let's hit one view that it'll take a second there And you can see that we're in the front view, but in a pretty cool way, we are, oh, I'm in a 3D view one. There we go. We can get a 3D representation of our scene according to that camera view in Nuke. So, I mean, if I wanted to, put something next to that glass in Nuke without knowing where that glass is in two-dimensional space. I can use the position pass in order to generate kind of like a 3D compositing viewport view of the scene. You can see how it falls off where there's no information from the camera rays, uh, but that doesn't really matter because we can see pretty clearly where it would be that we would need to put stuff. And I think also it just looks super cool in its own right, you know? So the last thing that I want to look at is uh, let's just zoom out on the position pass and let's type in tab SH for a shuffle node. And let's just bring up a shuffle node and let's use that. And let's just, for instance, use only the red channel. So now we're getting the X component of the shading. The same thing can be done for the green channel, the Y component. And again, obviously the same thing for the blue channel. I think that the most commonly used one here would be, uh, and obviously this could be, you know, further graded down uh, however you want it to lift information because there's so much information here because it's a 32-bit image that if we were just to keep piping this up, you can see that we can really get at something that could potentially give us 
you know, some good information for some masking or some overlay effects. Like if we wanted to, you know, I mean, just quickly, let's, let's take a look at this color image and let's say if I wanted to, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this, but let's say if I wanted to just molt that on over there, let's just with the multiply node. And you can see that we've added kind of a little bit of a fog effect, right? So we could also, you know, color correct that. We could grade that. We could put in the color, you know, into the red so that we could tint it a little bit red with a ramp up or blue. You know, I mean, there's just all kinds of numerous things that we can do with that using using that as an overlay pass or you can also always use it obviously in a mask input on any node. Okay with that that's just our quick 10 minute lesson on a position pass using it how to render it out of Maya how to get it into Nuke and a few different things that we can do with it and how we can visualize it. 